Digital 410 Productions proudly presents The Waterman and D-Train Show. Broadcasting live from Mac Computer Studio in Cape Coral, Florida, it's The Waterman and D-Train Show, and I'm your overweight co-host, The D-Train. Here is Dave. Yeah, bro. And much like always, joining us from Las Vegas, Neb, it's Gordon. What's up, Gordon? Hello. You there, Gordon? Yes, I am. There he is. And then there's background music. Everything drops out, so Mm -hmm. I got to figure it out on my end. What's shaking, brother? What's shaking, bacon? Just working, working, working. Uh, Watching the Golden Knights lose last night, but that's okay. I think we're still in the hunt. uh, Uh, It's such a long season, that won't matter. Oh, no, there's Knights. only eight games left or less. That's Vegas' new NHL team. Well, oh. they've been around for, what, three seasons now? No, this is the second one. First season, we went all the way to the Stanley Finals. Yeah, beginner's nice. luck. Yeah. I, 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 when I was thinking Golden Knights, I was thinking UCF because they just lost to Duke when I was uh, on my way over. I was checking it out. They lost to Duke. UCF lost to Duke. But come on, man. Zion, this kid's insane. You watch much college basketball, Gordon? I watch absolutely none. Really? What about you, D Train? Nope. No, none. You're six foot five, and you're completely horrible at basketball, and you're an embarrassment to the court. You stay Bro, far away from the sport you... as possible. Big time of year right now, man. It's the NCAA, bros. Uh huh. You know. But uh, anyways, Duke looking just they're looking good. They lost by one or won by one point. Excuse me. UCF lost by one, but uh, you know, Duke's looking good. North Carolina, obviously, these guys just always a dominant force in the NCAA. But forget all that, boys. How is everybody doing, first of all? Real quick. How you feeling, man? You're burnt, huh? I'm exhausted, like always. Real quick, Dave. Yeah, uh, how tall are you? 5'10". Uh, 5'10". Five, ten. Five, Why? Ten. What do you got going? Uh, and, uh... I'm oh, sorry, how much do you weigh? Uh, right now, I'm probably about 150, 155. 150. We'll give you 153. All right. You said 5'10"? Yep. Fantastic. What's the problem? Okay. I see that score over there. It doesn't look good. No, it's uh, actually, it kind of goes, it, it kind of supports my hypothesis. What? When people look at you and they yeah. see your your weight, right? what do they usually say about you? They say I'm skinny, man. They say that I'm, I'm There's underweight. There's usually an adjective added to that phrase. You're what skinny? Crackhead skinny, right? Yeah, crack, yeah. You can see, yeah people sometimes skinny. they say that, but not always. And I dealt know. with that growing up. You know, I was... Six foot five and weighed yeah. 175 pounds in high school, and I was often called tree or crackhead skinny, this, right. that, and the other thing, and you know all that stuff. And so I've been there. I understand. But <laughs> uh, the reason Why? I bring this up is when I did my intro, I called myself the overweight D train. Dude, yeah, you're not though, man. You look great. Thus, once again, kind of proving my point. All right. Where I'm going with all of this is the outdated science known as the BMI. Oh, the or body the B- mass index. Yeah, and and people always call it the BMI index, which mm-hmm. is redundant, because like you just said, it's called the body mass index, mm-hmm. not the body mass index index. Right. Which my, by the way, different subject, but uh, the TBK killer. Yeah, the torch buying. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. It's yeah. once again, it's redundant. People call him the TBK killer, but oh, it's, we were talking about that. Yeah, it's the torture TBK buying killer. killer killer. Yeah. So why why do you have to call him the torture buying the TBK yeah. killer? When he's, it should be the TB killer or the TBK. <laughs> yeah, what is the point in all that? Yeah, it's redundant. It's I kind of like when you say, I've got to unloosen something. <laughs> exactly. i got to unloosen something. I need to unloosen something. Yeah. Anyhow, the BMI index. Yeah. I just ran a quick calculation because... So pe- what's up with me? People say you're crackhead skinny. They say that. At, uh, we gave you a... Uh, but that's funny. I'm not crackhead skinny, man. We said you're 153 pounds. Yeah, about We that. gave you two pounds. You're 5'10". You, according to the BMI index that was created in 1830, when the average height of the average American was 5'4". 5'4". Five, four. Five, four. Jeez. So you are what? six pounds higher than what they were on average Okay. in 1830. And so, amazingly enough, you being crackhead skinny at 5'10", <laughs> Come on you that. are exactly where you're supposed to be. Really? According to BMX Index, you are normal. I'm a normal guy. You are 22.0. You're dead I'm nuts not where you need to be. Well, I'm not overweight, bro. I'm always old, moving, right so I'm average. a very active guy. What's that, guy. Gordon? said he's old-timey average. Well, I'm a very active guy, Gordon. I'm, I never, I don't sit still, bro. This isn't an attack on you. This is an attack on the BMI Index. Right. Or the old BMI. Timing. The BM Index. The BM... Go ahead, Gordon. 
said old timey meaning 1830 whatever exactly so in 1830 dave is exactly where you're supposed to be and the majority of the people what? walking the earth were exactly where you're at at the height it's funny you say that because last night i was at an event and i had a guy come up and he and he was talking to me and he says bro he's like why don't you go let me get let's get food for you man and I'm laughing, and I'm going, look, I eat. I eat like crazy. Yep. It's just I got a high, a very high metabolism. My body is all, always in that go mode. So if, if we got to get stuff done, it's, let's just do it. Let's go. Let's go. You know, let's go. Let's get it done. And for some reason, it keeps me at a, how shall we say, svelte, <laughs> a, you know, a, a semi-physically fit person. Granted, I'm not super physically fit, but um, weight-wise, I think I am. Well, according you know? to the BM index, the bowel movement index, uh -oh. the BMI, yeah. kind of shit that is. You're exactly where you <laughs> need to be. Well, I hope so, man. What about you? What, what, have you tapped in your bro? No, because I don't need to. Um, right. Like I said, I'm fucking me. fat. It doesn't matter. Well, see, at least you can admit it, bro. I mean, but bro, you, listen, Gordon, you're, you live in a state in the summertime where it's 115 degrees man granted it's a dry heat as they say <laughs> my oven's a dry heat i know right they say oven. that but i mean yeah, you know you're, you're out there let's back that up a little don i would rather sit in a dry heat sauna yeah. than a fucking steam room i hear you on that bro i hear you man i hear you on that i love the dry heat it doesn't bother me as much clears as out this. your pores you hear you i bet you got a better complexion than we do yeah I actually know because you've got to attack lotion as your friend. Yeah, I don't but, use lotion. I don't use lotion, man. What, what are you talking I, about? Sally? Oh, out here, you got to. You got to rub the lotion on the skin. It puts the lotion in the basket or it does what it... No. Get out of here with It puts the lotion, lotion in the basket or it gets to hose again. <laughs> Oof. Well, the reason I bring Sorry it up... All right, hit me with it. We talked last week. I got a new phone, and in yeah. this new phone, there... I already have two um, fitness apps I use. One is the <laughs> Fitbit app, and one is the one I use to track my running. Yeah. But the LG phone comes with LG Fitness. Okay. And this is the only app that actually includes the BMI, or the Bowel Movement oh, Index. Okay, right, right. <laughs> and so I, I'm not even paying attention to it. It's just yeah. during the setup process, okay, I'm 40 years old. Setting in your gig, yeah, you're Mail. Weight. Yep. Now, keep in mind, this is 2019. Hype. There's only two options for sexes. They haven't added the other oh, yet. Oh, they haven't? Really? No. Wow, that's I'm interesting. I'm sure that'll get shut down, but yeah, anyhow. We'll see. So I clicked the mail, put in six foot five. All right. As of this morning, what? Two hundred and twelve point three pounds. But yesterday before what? yesterday I was two fourteen, so I put in two fourteen. And it probably told me that I was twenty five pounds overweight. Ooh. That doesn't say but how tall are you? You're I'm six, six foot five. So if I were to exist in eighteen thirty at six foot five my goal weight is 189 pounds. Wow. Well, keep that now going back to your something's whole something's weird there. Keep that keep that in mind going back to the whole crackhead skinny comment. Yeah. Um, people who knew me in high school. I was six five in high school and I weighed a buck seventy five. Yeah. So that's twelve pounds saying, away from being point, normal. But at that point they were saying you're a crackhead skinny. Crackhead skinny, I got photos you can count every rib. Right. You can really? hey your father must have been a pirate because he left you a sunken chest. Oh, uh, very funny. Or you take off the shirt, hey, put away put the bird away. Yeah, yeah. And so I'd get all those comments. Right. But so twelve pounds is the difference between hair be, between being a um, heroin addict slash yeah. 1990 supermodel. Right. For uh who was that? Um like like uh, uh Kate Moss or something. Yeah. And being normal. And so it's like, I was curious. I'm like, I wonder what it would actually take for me to actually try to get to 189. Well, you, you said you're 212 now? This so, morning I was 212.14. All right. And you got to remember that BMI does not take into the account muscle. That, well, that's my other point. I was thinking it would be an interesting almost documentary for YouTube to document <laughs> myself chasing 189. Why don't you do that? Because I would have to stop lifting weights. You'd I would have basically have to strictly go running oh, okay. and starve myself yeah. to get down to 189 at six foot five. One thing I know, you're not about starving yourself. And so, well, I mean, I, I, I mean, can, I'm just saying, you know, not like you eat a lot. No, but, saying, I, but I do hold myself to a challenge. You do. And um, I've seen it. But that would be a tremendous waste of effort that I've put in over the last couple of years with the weightlifting and all that. Yeah. And so I don't know if I'm, you know, if it was, because I, no. I think, I think I could probably, if I went hardcore and just strictly water and like rabbit food, 
I don't think I could hit the 189 with the with the lifting of the weights and the, and the muscle mass. No way. But the, I mean, look at look at Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. Mm-hmm. He would probably be considered obese by yeah. that. Well, that's BMI scale. well, that's my whole point. Is this is eighteen what? Real quick. Eighteen thirty. The, the scale. But 18, the problem is, why have they not updated? That's this? my whole point of this conversation. If you go to a nutritionist or right. you go to the it's doctor, it's got to be different. Everything is based off of the BMI to this day. Still from the eighteen thirties. Yes, exactly. That is insane, man. It's like at what point do we recalculate this? One, because everybody's taller now. Right. Two, I haven't done it because I'm not a scientist, but one might argue that probably our bones may even be denser than they were back mm. in eighteen thirties, back when True. people were lacking calcium. Yep. People I would were agree. lacking um immune just, pills. Just it just it, vitamins and minerals. People man. were born without um prenatal vitamins. All kind of stuff. All that well, stuff. Plus health and, and and doctors and medical was in its relative infancy yeah. infancy back then. You know, we've learned a lot since then. So do you know? Yeah. We... But yet we still we still stick to it. Yeah. Eighteen yeah, thirties is BMI index. This is this is insane. So BMI index. B, yeah, B, B, BMI index. This is crazy because if it's, I mean, eighteen thirties. We all know that food was scarce. Like you say, Gordon. You know, uh, healthcare was at a minimum minimalist. You know. Uh, oh, good big. thing that one wasn't open. No, it's not open. It had beer on my carpet. Oh no. Stupid marble. Um, and uh, so, you know, we know that, that I forgot where I was now. The damn marble's taking my attention away. It's a shiny object. Well, you lost Sorry, boys. What Sorry. you're saying, Don, is is the BMI index came out pre BM index. Civil War. <laughs> yeah, yes. it's pre, yeah. I mean, you know, so so we're looking at health care from, uh, from the doctors. We're looking at what the government says is healthy. And it doesn't pertain well, here, to it doesn't pertain to 2019, man. Let's have a little fun for those watching the video. Stand up and get in that closet. You, we've done this before, but what? go ahead, take your headphones off, stand up and open that closet, get that uniform out. Oh, uh, you know the uniform. Yeah. So a few years back, um, a friend of mine used to do work for the uh, military museum in Largo, Florida. The guy who ran it passed away, and they closed it down. But before they closed it down, okay, stop drinking a beer. We're, sorry, bro. We're live here. That's all I'm, I'm, already, I'm already buying time for you to walk. It should be the very last one in the very back. On the right? Yeah, in the very back. Yeah. The very back. Oh, yeah, I know. So what this is, this is the uh, Marine Corps Vandegrift jacket, similar to the Eisenhower jacket. Now, this one was original made in New Zealand when they, after Guadalcanal, they got sent back to New Zealand. This jacket was designed for normally a 17 to 22-year-old. Go ahead and try to put that jacket on, Dave. Uh-huh. Yeah, now, keep in mind, this is... The size of a marine, a svelte-built, starved marine who starved after being on Guadalcanal with no food for three months, 75 years ago. <laughs> and we'll stand in front of the camera so people can I, see I'm it. I'm just trying show. to get it on, man. Now Dave is 40 and five foot <laughs> ten, and the thing fits him barely. He probably if he buttoned it up and sat down, he'd probably pop a button off of it. Yeah, it doesn't want to. But and that's what, and that's what I was yeah. saying. I mean, this thing. The Civil War was a, in 1861. Mm-hmm. This thing goes way back before then. It's exactly. Um, now we just went 75 years back to um, back to World War II. Well, let's go back to 19 uh, 15, 1916, World War One. Correct. If you look at those, I think it was the uh, the Russian helmets, the ones with the spike on the top. No, the German helmets with the spikes on the top. If you see one of those at an antique store, an original one. Those things are so small. They're, they're sco- the circumference of the skull, because the body, due to, once again, vitamins, prenatal vitamins, uh, calcium deficiency, their helmets were so small that those things would probably barely fit a, two, a five-year-old now. They're insanely small, because small. our bodies were so small back then. But once right. again, here we are, judging people's weight when, you, when they go to the dietitian or the gym, we're judging people's what are you doing? Dude, bro, my nose is running like crazy, man. I've been we, sick, man. We judge people's livelihood and how fat they are based off of some old-ass technology. It's like, when are we going to update that? Or when is science going to update that? It's horrible. Sorry, dude. I've been sick, bro. I, I don't know when science is going to update nothing. I think we lost Gordon. Gordon, you there? No, I'm here. I'm Sorry, just, bro. Uh, I man, I know I've been sick, man. For the shit show on the other side with oh, Dave. That's me, man, dude, bro. I, I've been a little sick, and then he's talking, and my nose is like it's going. And I feel it coming down my lip, and I'm like, oh, come on, man. 
Yeah, <laughs> seriously. This is this is my life, bro. This is how things happen to me, man. Great pod. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well. All right, boys. I got to talk about something, man. Don't you know, talk about it, man. Uh, it's, just, it's just, it's it's driving me crazy. Just don't open up, but let me tell you. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> you, you, you were. That's funny. I was close, wait, wait, dude. What's the alternate phrase to what, let I, me tell you? I was so close, man. Mm -hmm. So close to saying that. You're right, bro. All right. <clears throat> we all know. We've all been to local... I here here's how here's how it's gonna come out. I was at an event yesterday. Very cool event, I must say. The people there were very nice, but carnival rides are sketchy as hell, bro. What do you expect? They tear them down every night. I mean, I was the looking. Who's operating them, Dave? I was looking at the carny rides, and Dave's I'm Dave's long last calling this being a carny. No, it's not, man. <laughs> Just throw in the towel and do it. No, it's not. And I've been offered a chance to come down and you know operate, you know, a ride for a night or whatever. I, no, no, no. I mean, no, no offense against anybody that operates that stuff. That's what they do. But the rides, bro. Just the clankety clank and stuff that was going on last night. It's like tick, 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 tick. And I'm going, look at these little bitty box roller coasters. You know, uh, oh, I said it. Shoot me. I said it. But they're all like, they're just, it's just, it's ah, it's just sketch, man. It's just sketch. And I know you've got, what's the last time you've been to a carnival? Stop, man. You're making me wince. One down the street, we have a little uh, balloon festival like, within walking distance. Just get it over with. It's, ow! Dude, those things are. I think the last suck. time I've been to a fair was a few years ago. It was the uh, Lee County Fair, but prior to that was the Ohio State Fair. Yeah. That was about, God, uh, 1999, 2000, before I left for California. I mean, the food's good. I love fair food. Fair food is awesome. I got to say that. Love the food. The rides, I wouldn't, I just, I just, I'm. Uh, maybe I'm too old now, and I realize what can happen, but the young people love it. They're just, you know, all over it, just, you know, riding the Ferris wheels and everything else, man. Well, in fairness, most of that stuff's inspected before it uh, gets the go-ahead from the local, <clears throat> local uh, government. Is it really, Gordon? Is it really inspected thoroughly? Hypothetically, <laughs> much like the uh, credit well, card skimmers like, on, I mean, yeah, credit I mean, card swipers yeah, on all the gas, gas pumps. Is it really looked into? I mean, I, I, you know, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. They, well, how many fair accidents have we that's seen? That's what I'm Googling right now. I'm, bro, come <laughs> on. There's got to be at least, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to take a hypothetical guess, Gordon. I want you to guess too. I'm going to say 15 accidents a year. What do you think, Gordon? Maybe five. Five? I'm saying 15. What do you think? Um, I, I don't want to. Um, I'm already a little um. On the on the higher side. No, I'm I'm you googling it, so I'm up. I'm not. Uh, you're not participating. Yeah. All it, right. So so your brother Gordon says five. I'm saying fifteen. The problem I'm having is Google's trying to mix it in with amusement parks, which shouldn't count because they have inspectors yeah. on staff. I'm trying county to find fairs. the county, you know, the actual county fair and carnival. But they're a lot of fun. I, I got to say that you know everybody. It's cool because you get your local people that come together. And everybody intermixes and is having fun and eating food, but the rides are just they're, they they weird me out, man. They well, weird me out. Well, as as I've gotten older, I can't ride those That's style of rides because they jack my back up. Yeah, they're just too uh, jerkity and clankety. Yeah, they're just yeah. Everything's just like pop 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 bam, you know, and then it just lets loose and just it's just it's gnarly, man. Well, here's a story from back in 2017. Illinois shut down 12 of their carnival rides after the deadly Ohio State Fair accident. When? when? That, yeah, was, I forget. 15? Yeah, I for, that was uh, 2017 when that <laughs> um, girl got killed at Ohio State oh, Fair. Oh, that sucks. So, the one uh, but I'm I can't find, find an actual statistical Like a number. statistical how many yeah. numbers a year? The one I can find, and it does include amusement park rides, but it actually puts my answer into the correct category, is an average of 4.5 amusement ride-related deaths per year between Man. the years of 1987 and 2000. Did you, you Googled that as I was talking about it, and yeah. you already had it on hand. That's why you said five. I <laughs> remember. <laughs> you want to talk about cover-ups. I remember this yeah. when I lived in Long Beach. Um What's the the Matterhorn at Disney? Mm. Someone died on that. Yeah, I and, remember that. I mean, I think it made local news, but whenever I mention it outside of California, like no People one, don't no know. one remembers because they covered They've it up. They've had quite well. a few deaths there at the you know the the happiest place on earth. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> 
I don't want to use their name, man, but yeah, they've had some incidents there. So Gnarly. anything else happened at the fair other than you get sketched? Oh, um, besides that, man, I gotta say it was nice going out, and I gotta, I gotta say this: the the Latino community, I love them. They love you. They love me. I love them. I had such a great time out there because they all came out to say hello. They really, they came out in force. Say hello or say hola. They used to go, orale and coyote. I mean, we're out there laughing. We had a good time last night, but they came out, and I was pretty stoked to see them all because even he, the, the guy I was with, the partner I was with, looks at me, and he says, hey, stop, man. I'm stoked. Did I? Oh, come on. In the neck. So, anyways, they were happy to James see me. James lately, huh? They were happy to see me out there, Gordon. What am I supposed to do, man? I'm hanging out. I'm having a good time eating food it, it was it was a really good time i i really enjoyed it but it was nice to see him because they were like you don't get out here very often i was like no not really you know down in collier you know i don't get to go out there and make a make an appearance and i went down there and they were stoked to have us down there and what a good time man what a damn good time i just i just can't bring myself to ride the rides that's all we were talking about bmi earlier and Martin uh, joining us from New York like he always does. And yeah. Apparently he runs marathons too in New York. Right. He says when I run D train, I like to stay at the eight to nine minute mile. That's where all the uh, that's where all the healthy chicks run at. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Who says this? Uh, Martin. Nice, Martin. Anything faster, not enough meat on the bone. Anything right. slower, too much meat. Dude, Martin's got it down. So yeah. he's got it down. The girls with the nine and a half minute split. That's yeah, why he's running. Bro, I hear you, man. Well, bro, last <laughs> night you know where I gravitated towards. The old, uh, uh, the puppy. 4-H pet. farm? No, the puppy pet barn, bro. Where the puppies are at, bro. Because the chicks are going to want to come over and talk to, you know, see the little puppies, bro. So that's where I'm chilling. Shoot. You kidding got me? got it on point, though. I mean, if you're going to torture yourself, you might as well enjoy the view. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The eight, eight, nine minute mark, huh? That's, that's the right BMI index. Is, and is that's no, saying. that's no, uh, nothing to sneeze at. Um, eight minute, eight minute mile. That's a damn good mile. You're huh? getting it. Well, that's what Martin's running at. I'm at, I'm almost at an eight and a half to nine minute mile. But, Are you? So but, yeah, it right took me a long time say, to get there. So, so yeah, you're in that group. You're in that game. <laughs> yeah, Ryan said uh, via Facebook um, two years ago there was a fair accident at Lehigh, Lehigh. Really? That's what they changed it to. If that's where all the Jews lived, Lehigh. What? <laughs> Lehigh. What, what, whoa, 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 back up. I'm just saying, if they, if they, uh, if they had a Jew, uh, if Lahiam. they had a large Jewish population, they'd rename it the Lehigh Makers. <laughs> Good God. It's, this show's going south real fast, show man. went south a long time ago. Yeah, I know. Yeah, like 15, 25 episodes Since ago. Since we're on the topic of your uh, core demographic, <laughs> this brings up an interesting topic. <laughs> I just gave Dave two sit-down restaurant-style burritos. Yeah, bro. And I had the fajitas. How were they? Great. This is the second time in two weeks I've had steak fajitas. Nice. I love steak fajitas. But every time I have a good fajita, mm. I question, am I eating it wrong? Okay. What, what, just As an expert, being yourself, how does one you? eat a fajita? Well, why? I don't. I don't know. I don't know if there's a super correct way, but you don't. You don't eat it over a plate. I know that. You stuff it full as much as you can, as far as uh, onions. I don't know what all did. You, what all did you get on the sides? I don't know. Uh, sour cream. You don't use sour Steak, cream. Steak, onions, um, sour grilled cream onions, grilled is peppers, um, rice. Reed fried beans, guacamole. Okay, rice, lettuce, uh, yeah. sour cream, tomato. I'd say rice, refried beans, maybe some lettuce, tomato. Uh, you know, uh, but like sour cream and stuff like that is not. That is not what they don't use that south. Of the okay, border, you're but. you're getting you're getting caught up in semantics. How do you physically eat a fajita? I would say uh, fold it. Almost, Do you roll it up like a burrito? Yeah, I mean, almost like a burrito style. You, I mean, because if you stuff it so much, you're not, you know, you just get that tip cooled, curled over on each side, and mm -hmm. then eat it like a mini, like a like a taquito in a way. I almost eat it like a mini taco, but here's why I bring it up. And go ahead, Gordon. You've seen a lot. You, Thank you. What do you think, Gordon? Gordon's worked in many restaurants. How do you eat a fajita? The way I eat a fajita is very much like Don. I actually eat it like a mini taco, but I don't right. throw my beans in it. I usually really? eat that on the side. I love uh, everything. Well, the reason I was wondering if I was angloing up my fajita, mm. you ever notice they give you a shit ton of protein, mm. a shit ton of vegetables, mm. a ton of rice, and the accoutrements, 
but they give you like three and a half tortillas. Right. Tortillas are dirt cheap. They do give you. They why do they off. never give you enough tortillas? And which is wonder why I'm wondering: Am I eating this right? Am I angling it up? Am I mm. not doing it the appropriate way? Am I supposed to be using the tortilla like an Irishman uses bread and dip it in there? I no. mean, but okay. If now, then why do they give you so much protein? Steak's expensive. Rice yeah. is cheap. They well, give you plenty of rice. They're using skirt steak, bro. But compared to a freaking flour yeah, tortilla. You're right. I know. Why don't they give you Why like don't they give you a seven six, of them yeah, instead six, of three and a half? Seven, eight tortillas. I don't you know, man. You never have enough tortillas. I don't know why they and do I've, that, but I've noticed I've the never same thing. gone as far as asking for more. I usually, what I do Why not? is I'll blow through the three and a half, and then I'll basically take everything, mix it together, and eat it like a just taco like a salad. salad. <laughs> oh, God. Now, that's American. Or I'll just, you know, grab a spoonful, spoonful of the steak and the um, beans and the potatoes and all that and just eat with a fork. But it's like, mm. why is there such a shortage on tortillas at these Mexican I restaurants? Oh, you're right. I've noticed that some of the other restaurants, when I've ordered fajitas, now that you're saying it, when they bring out the little... Fajita warmer? Mm -hmm. Is that what it was in? Like the little... No, uh, this was just wrapped in... Um, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, they the bring little, it up, plastic little plastic bin. bin thing, and they got the fajitas in there, and they're just keeping them warm and all that jazz. And they only give you like four. What's yeah. the point? Why? Because yeah. you're always going to have that extra meat and yeah, everything. It's like, why not, you know, give bring an extra tortilla? Six, bring me eight. If you have to throw it in the trash, I don't know. It's what? A half know. a cent? Yeah, come on. It's well, according to the etiquette scholar, oh, the geez. manners for eating a fajita... That is a fill. fajita. And with everything, roll them up like a taquito. Yeah. And that's it. That's what I said. Roll them up like so a taquito, man. maybe I'm just man. getting a little skinny with them. I need to just fatten them up. Ah, yeah, bro. You, you got to max it out, man, because that's, that's the only bread you got, though. I know, but there's not, not like even there's bread, but... room on the table to get out there and roll that son of a bitch up. No, that's true. You that's kind true. of got to do it while only... hovering. You almost got to do it like you're rolling a cigarette. And they're, yeah, and they're, <laughs> and they're all, and, the, and I, I agree with you. The, 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 the fajita, or the, the tortillas they give you. The tortillas that they give you are not giant like yeah, burrito they're, they're style. Yeah, they're taco tortillas. Yeah, they're not burrito style. Yeah, it'd be they're different. They gave me four and a half burrito Soft style. tacos. You know, something the size of a, a personal pizza. That's a travesty. I don't understand it either. That's not cool. You have to start bringing your own when you go to these restaurants, bro. Bring your own tortillas. Yeah, man, bring your own BYOT. tortillas. Yeah, BYOT tortillas. Get a server. Hey, can you throw these in the microwave to warm them up? Shoot, oh, I'd do it. <laughs> do they still have California pizza, bleh, pizza, pizza kitchens out there, Gordon? Yes, they do. Are they still popular or are they kind of falling by the wayside? Yeah, I don't really go there, so I couldn't answer that question. Well, I know they're popular enough that they do have food in a frozen food section of um, of the Publix, if you will. Do they? Well, the reason I bring this up is they were all over the place in California. Hence yeah. the name, California well, Pizza Kitchen. And I think I brought this up like back in episode four. Um, work out there is so sparse that people bust their ass to maintain their jobs because it's hard to find a job. Mm. And the first and only time I went to an open interview was at a California pizza kitchen where they had like three positions open, like 38 people in a room all vying for it. Mm. But the reason I bring all that up is the place that I went to, the Mexican restaurant, mm. is in an old California pizza, pizza kitchen, kitchen, which they opened up of all places, North Fort Myers, which isn't the demographic for a high end somewhat, you know, it's okay. It's not California like California pizza kitchen. It's not like a... Uh, no, super high-end chef place, but it's higher than a Pizza Hut or Don yeah, <laughs> Domino's. Yeah. But to open up a more expensive style pizza place Eclectic in North style, Fort man. Myers, where which is not exactly upper middle class, and then they wonder why it went out of business within a year. It's like, yeah, I should open that shit up in Naples. Yeah. Or Bonita. Well, I'm sure they got them down there. They have to. Hell, we couldn't even keep an Uno's Pizzeria open in Cape Coral. Get or, out of or here. Or Fort Myers. Really? Mm -hmm. that was, that's good pizza, man. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff. Both of them closed down. Wow. The one in Fort Myers closed down? Oh, it closed down a long time ago. I did not know that. Yeah, the one in Daniel. It shows you that I don't get out that much. Or when I do get out. It's, it's to <laughs> eat tripe. Yeah, eat tripe and, you know, uh, hang, uh, hang out with the Vatos at the bar. While we're on this topic, Vato! let's yeah, just stay on the they? food topic for yeah, a little longer. So, no problem. I love food. Let's do a hypo hypothetical situation, Dave. What do you got? You're 47 and successful. <laughs> You're damn right. You got your own house. Mm. You got an old lady or an old man, whatever your preference is. I'm not here to judge. Shoot, brother. In the you, couch. You know where I'm at. Watching football. And she looks, or he looks at you and says, Dave, honey, sweet day already of mine. We have our own house now. Uh -huh. The first thing a man needs to do when he buys his own home is have the ability to cook outside. Hell yeah. I want you to go down to the big box store and buy yourself a grill. Money's right. no object, Dave. Oh, okay. Love of mine. Nice. Go down and buy yourself a grill. 
What kind of grill do you buy? Uh, not looking for brand. I'm looking for let functionality. Me you, let me tell you what I buy. I buy method a, of cooking. Method I, of cooking. I buy a charcoal Weber. That's what I buy. I buy a nice standard charcoal Weber grill because you can take those basins and build around them. You could take uh, uh, concrete uh, bricks or just brick, excuse me, red brick, and build yourself a nice little area and then have a tub to where that thing sits right down in there if you want. You can but do all kinds of things. But you could do it. the same thing with a propane grill. Why are you well, choosing the more superior? Because I'm charcoal. able Well, let me tell you, because I'm able to not only cook with charcoal, but I can cook with wood. I cook with oak. You name it, mesquite. And you can cook with all kinds of different woods, man. And that's that's part of the that's part of the allure of gr- of grilling, man. Slow cooking some ribs, man. Mesquite ribs, dude. Come on. Who's not into that? Drinking beer all day. I'm a little more simple. with the ladies. I look at it this way because I agree with you. All right. I'm a charcoal guy. Hell yeah. Because after all, if I wanted to cook with propane, I'd cook in my goddamn kitchen where my electric stove's at. Yeah. The reason I want to grill outside is I want the flavor of charcoal. Mm, I want the smell, man. What about you, Gordon? What kind of grill do you own? Well, I can tell you what I prefer versus what I own. He's an asshole, I'd sir. I'd prefer a Traeger, a but what? I can't afford a Traeger. I don't think you can say uh, that these days. Yeah, I don't know if you can say that, man. Is that legal? Nah, uh, I don't know. It's a, a wood a wood burning. Nice. Like a smoker? However, and I knew where this was going. But what kind uh, of grill I do you have? A, I went and purchased a, a very nice gas grill. He's an asshole, sir. Now, oh. that being said, when I look at a purchase like this, we got on this ship money, anyhow. what am I going to get the most use out of? How is it the most efficient? Right. One of the issues that has driven this fact is in the summertime, in this heat, you don't want to add any more heat to your kitchen. He's an asshole, sir. So I want to go outside and just throw a steak on or burgers or whatever, keep the heat outside. Therefore, the gas grill. It's not it's like you're quick. slaving over the grill the whole time. One of the biggest yeah, people's man. biggest rookie mistakes from grilling out is they flip their meat too much. Yeah, they're over there playing with they it. They want to play with their playing meat with way their meat, too man. much. Keep your hands off your meat. Yep. Get the grill exactly. nice and hot. And now with, you know, the, the pre-fluided charcoal, you don't have to add this light fluid anymore. Mm-hmm. It's, it's all pre-done. You just Still like the whole damn bag. It. Yeah, just light it up. Walk away for 20 minutes, so there's no extra heat there because you're inside watching the game as your, your coals get better. Mm-hmm. Your buddies. You come out, you get a handful of meat, you throw it on the grill, you set the timer on your phone, and you walk away. So as far as adding more heat, unless you're, you shouldn't be standing over it that whole time. Heating up, the stove will actually heat up the room, the kitchen, because I have an open concept floor plan, and make everything a little more comfortable, uncomfortable, and make the. Don't you have a air ceiling fan? What are you talking about? He's saying that in Las Vegas. I go Vegas, outside to cook so I don't heat up my fucking house. Okay, well, listen, look, I got to uh, listen. I agree with you because listen, my house, my house in in Southern California, man. Now, I lived at the beach, and I had two grills. We had the outside grill that we had, you know, brought the Weber, right? And mind you, I lived at the beach, bro, like literally on the beach. And the inside of our house had this barbecue built into the home. It was a built-in stone grill with a, with a crank yep. where you could lower down this big giant uh-huh. metal grate that would go down. You could lo- you know get it closer to the heat or back it off. But it was this giant grill in the kitchen, man. It was a trip. I was like, check that out, you know, when I, when I moved into that one place. It's like, check that out. But I still grilled outside all the time. I still didn't grill out indoors. So do you like cut down on electricity in the wintertime and it gets cold? You just heat your house with your stove? Yeah, bro. Oh, I mean, my house is heated by gas anyway. Yeah, oh, okay. I, I did that in the trailer, man. <laughs> I no, it's just to me, it's more efficient. It's, you know, it's a lot quicker cleanup and everything else to do it three, four days a week outside, you know, after work. I will say it is. It's, a, it's an it, outside stove. That's I would say it is a bit of a hassle to dump the grill. I usually just find a corner of my yard where the grass is kind of patchy, and I yeah. just dump it there. Cause, it's like fertilizer. Yeah, and, it, you know, the rain just soaks it in. Yeah, so. man. Just disperses it. Looks good. I love charcoal. Nice. Oh, and what's nice about the gas grill, and I'm going to go to the defense, is uh, you can also add wood to it. Uh, you know, yeah, you can. You use wood to, to make it smoke. And this thing's got a rotisserie on it. And to be able to rotisserie your own chicken at home, that's a beautiful thing. I got to get the video. It's funny you boys are talking about brought up barbecue grills because, uh-huh. let's see, what's today? Sunday? Sunday. Friday. Sunday, Sunday. Friday. I'm chilling. Well, I guess it'd be Friday into Saturday morning. I'm chilling out outside my house. 
Max in relaxing off the yeah, bro. shooting some having b-ball a, outside having of the a, school when a couple yeah, of guys who were up in this good started making trouble in the neighborhood. There you go. Having a cool smoke, right? Yeah, your black eyes healing up mighty nice, by the way. Yeah, I'm a black eye. You see that, dude? <laughs> what do you think of it now, huh? But anyway, well, let's get to the black eye in a second. Still so, don't want to talk about that, huh? No, we can't talk about the black eye, bro. Hey, man, you should see the other guy. That's all I got to say. So, uh... So I'm chilling out, man, and I'm having a cool smoke. It's Friday into Saturday, and I hear this this scratching, this sound going on. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what is this, you know? And I keep hearing, and I'm like, what is going on here? And so I start investigating, and I pulled the, the uh, grill cover off my uh, grill. Freaking rat in there eating the gristle, bro. I got the video out in the car. I'll have to show it to you. It's hilarious. He started Rats looking at me. It's all over the gristle. Yeah, he's looking at me, you know, and I, I hear him in there, man. The it, it's like it's all quiet outside, and all you hear is all you hear is this. And I'm like, what is going on? What is something's munching on something? And I started investigating, looking around, and then I was like, it's coming out of the grill. It's coming out of the grill. And I popped the grill top off, and I looked, and there he is, man, little bastard, sitting there just stuffing himself with. It's it's funny that you say that because I went to clean my grill today and it's full of freaking rat droppings in the bottom. I'm like son Dude, of a bitch. I'm telling you, man, you got to be careful leaving them outdoors right now. I don't know, I, you know. They will jump yeah. in there, and who wants to barbecue on a grill that's been crapped in or pissed on? The flames will sanitize well, yeah, it. Yeah, that's what I already thought that. That's flavor. <laughs> already thought that. Well, you scoop out the turds and maybe the whatever urine in there, man. The charcoal will take care of it. <laughs> so stupid what else you boys got going on anything good yeah i do i have something i've noticed probably last five seven years is what i label as dancing fools what you go you drive by a bus stop and one dude's standing there with his headphones on and he's full on this cat's boogieing <laughs> what one of them sign spinners corners you'll see just random people just fucking throwing down and dancing like they're in their own freaking musical because nice. it's hilarious yeah those you guys get it away or what Hmm? Now you, you see him here. You see him here occasionally. Usually yeah. in the more um, dense areas, like if you're driving through. It's so funny. We, that's downtown. why they call it River District because it's not a downtown area. Mm. Whenever you see people, oh, I'm going to downtown Fort Myers, oh. and they get down there like, wow, this is yeah, downtown. There ain't District. shit down here. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love it down there. It's super nice. Yeah, but that's why they changed it to River District because it's not big enough to be called downtown. Yeah, they're down there spinning stuff, man. Are you talking about science? No, he's right? talking about crazy oh, man, just, just, oh, just people who don't people. give a fuck just dancing at the bus stops oh, with their headphones yeah, on. Yeah, man, that's normal, man. I see that all the time. I see that all the time. I don't know why I run into that stuff, but I do. I well, do. we segued into downtown. Panhandlers dance all the time. That's how they get people's attention. So I had to go downtown yeah, yesterday happened? for a uh, wedding reception setup. Huh. Family member uh, got married in Vegas last week. Uh, extended family, Gordon, not your side. And <laughs> um, they wanted to have a Star Wars theme wedding reception downtown oh. Oh, okay. at the bar they met at. And so they hired some stormtroopers. Now, these were the, the 501st. No, um, the 501st. You know, you know yes, the 501st uh, regretfully declined mm. because they do, in fact, have a contract with Lucasfilms. Okay, I wasn't for and sure. And Lucasfilms will not allow them to operate. Out of facilities that serve alcohol. Oh, really? And so, since this was a bar, oh. um, the 501st regretfully declined. But we did find some guys oh. who had 501st quality uniforms. Now, I don't know if they were rogue agents or what, but they happily took the money and stood very still outside and basically followed the uh, bride and groom into the um, Imperial March. No, oh, did they? Really? That's kind of Yeah, cool. it was pretty cool got some photos with them but the reason i bring that up is well, i had to go down there at 11 to hook up a laptop to a big screen tv because oh. the tv wasn't smart enough to <laughs> oh really uh notice a dot mov file or powerpoint presentation file on the flash drive that was what? plugged into the usb under the tv and How so what i possible? had to do is go out and get an overpriced usb to hdmi adapter for my laptop because i tried hooking up to their mac and Anyhow, you had to download the drivers, but the drivers were beta, and they were going to email them to you. The email was never delivered, so I had to come back and get my laptop yeah. and hook it up. But anyhow, that's neither here nor there. Um, while I was downtown, uh, there was a cat chilling on the uh, <laughs> bench Yeah, it did. from 11 o'clock. And when I came back at 3, all dressed to the nines with my <laughs> two-piece suit because I don't have a jacket yet. You know, he, he gave me the knowing nod because I looked fresh. 
Yeah. But he was still chilling there. And so we were down there from 5 o'clock until 10. God. And I had to... Guy with tr- truck, guy with truck problems. I was the guy who was asked to take the table back home and all the other presents and all that. Other stuff. <laughs> now, sometime last week, Dave, I asked you. I said, "Hey, uh, yeah. you're going to see a friend of ours that I happen to give my fat pants to because he's as tall as yeah. me. He weighs as I much as I used to. Yeah, and I have been giving him some pants off and on when I get to the point where I know I'm never going to re-wear them. Yeah, why do you have more And so I had like three pairs of size 36 jeans sitting in the back seat of my truck. Yeah? And they've been in there for like three weeks. What'd you do with them? pushing them and moving them and pushing them and moving them. So it's like 9.45 last night and I'm putting a table in the back and I'm putting all this crap in my back seat and so I'm like, these goddamn jeans. (laughs) I'm tired of looking at them. I'm surprised you haven't been down. All right, anyway. So I pulled them out, folded them up, and I put them on my truck toolbox and I loaded up my truck. Uh Uh-oh. And I walked over to the homeless cat. Now that's presumptuous of me. That's cool. Saying he's homeless. Yeah, you don't know. I walked up to the guy who's covered in dirt who's been sitting on the same bench for 13 hours. Just chilling. And I said, hey, man. And, And I actually thought about this for a while. But I didn't want to, you know, offend the guy. Because, once again, he's not pushing a cart. He's just a dirty cat been sitting on the same bitch for 13 hours. He mm. could just be, you know, enjoying the day. Yeah. But I'm, and so I didn't want to just come up and say, hey, man, you want some free clothes? I wanted to have a little tact. And I wanted to do it where it wouldn't affect his delicate sensibilities, you know, sleeping on the street and all right. that. So I walked up to him and said, hey, man, you want to do me a favor? Mm-hmm. He's like, what's that? I said, I got these jeans, man. It's been sitting in the back of my truck for almost a month now. Yeah. I said, a friend of mine said that he was going to take them, and I could just never meet up with him. And I said, I'm tired of pushing them around. I'm tired of constantly moving them. Right. Do you want them? Yeah. Sure, man. I'll take them. Do Sweet. Want, do you want me to come to try? No, I'll, I'll be back. I'll go get them. So I went and got them, right? And I'm yeah. handing them to him. That's he, cool. And he's unfolding them. Around. And they're Levi's and Wranglers. They're, yeah. you know, quality stuff. And, uh... <laughs> I was like, yeah, they're size 36, man. Yeah. Best line ever. What do you say? Much like when I tried to give the guy in Long Beach, California, <laughs> one of my cheeseburgers. What after I spent say, the last bro? $4 that I had on two cheeseburgers, and I offered this gentleman one. Yeah. He looked at me and said, you got a belt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nah, dude, I don't care. It's not yeah. a wardrobe. And yeah, you I know. just gave you three pairs of... Uh, jeans and you now you now you want me to give you a belt? Yeah, you got a belt, man. Get, get some zip ties, homie. It's like, come on. No, I don't have a belt. I'm giving you some jeans because they're mm-hmm. on my way, and I figured you could probably use them. But no, mm-hmm. I don't have a belt. Cut some wire, bro. I've used it all. So he quickly scampered off, and I think he went to go try them on or sell them. I don't know either way. Uh, Sweet. He was gone, but now hey, he's gonna hit the club downtown. Hey, the <laughs> he did have Saturday, a nice right? pair of looking like. Skate shoes, but uh, that's cool. But yeah, I was, I was happy to get rid of them, and you know, it, it always kind of makes you feel a little good when you're helping somebody who's on a hard way out. Yeah, I it's just funny because, like I said, that one time in Long Beach, I yeah. just got off of work, I had four dollars my name, I bought two Ginger Bacon cheeseburgers, the same homeless guy who's been shuffling mm. down Bellflower every day. Mm. I can tell my crush, hey man, you want a cheeseburger? Mm-hmm. No, do you got three dollars? Yeah, right. <laughs> no, dude, you I know. just spent my last three dollars, I'm offering you half my food. Sorry, you can't buy your beer. I'm offering you a free hamburger. I love helping out the the disfortunate man because let me tell you, man, I get and I have slowly been climbing up. I guess you could say helping myself out. But there was a time he started at the bottom. Now he's here. Yeah, man. And there was a time. This is probably about a year and a half ago. Now I felt bad about this. And and speaking of trying to help people out, at least your guy accepted the jeans, but he did come back with. Hey man, do you got a belt? I was at a food establishment. I had stepped out front. Well, one may argue you don't come back with, "Hey man, you got a belt." It's, That's hey, true. Thanks for the free clothes. Yeah. Now I can put on something that doesn't stink. Well, I got cussed at. My instance, I got cussed at because I was at a pretty popular restaurant. I had gotten, I had gotten the nuclear wings. <laughs> okay. I can't eat food that makes me. Perspirate like I just got done running a 5K and, as I'm sitting there. And I, ha- I, had and I just got to have the nice heat that just warms up. I like well, heat, but I don't I like felt it. Bad. I don't, I'm not there to clean up my pores like I'm at some oh, high Hollywood it. mud bath. I love it. So I get done eating. I still got a few left over, and I'm outside. <laughs> and I had my styrofoam container with him in there, and there's this dude, and he's walking down. and Dick move. He was so hungry. <laughs> he was starving. I got it on video. 
and I gave them to the guy. Well, you got on video, so he probably thinks it was a prank. That's why you cut. No, it man, I just had my phone sitting there. I just, I, you know, I just. Excuse fired me, up you the random phone. gentleman, homeless mind. No, How, the guy, Would you like some of the hottest buffalo wings in well, town? Bro, first of all, the guy asked me for a smoke, and I'm like, sure, man, you want to smoke? No problem, bro. I'll, I'll give make you a you couple. Smoke. Try the heat. Yeah, man, here's a Waterman 100, homie. I have a few of them. And then he, you know, I could tell the guy I was hungry. I was like, you hungry, man? I <laughs> just, you hungry, bro? He's like, yeah. And I was like, take the rest of my food right here. And he bit into it, and the dude, the dude's sitting there, and, he's, and he started cussing me. He's like, what is this? You know, because he was just literally crying, and he was so pissed, so mad, he stormed off. And I was like, I was well, just it's trying not to like help. he has milk to cool it. No, I had some water, man. I just I, kind of water that do nothing but make it hotter sometimes. Well, I, was, I was just trying to help, but that that's my, you know, trying to help somebody out. You got one, Gordon? Yeah, you won't like this one. So what do you mean I won't like it? Here. Please tell me there's a, this is the story that has the phrase, Hey, would you like to buy a couch? You want to buy a lamp? Yeah, I want to hear it. No, it was more of a... I just got <laughs> sick of every goddamn gas station I'd pull into. I'd get yeah. up for money. Yeah. This one guy walked up, and he just caught me in a bad mood. I saw him walking up. Like, Dude, you ain't even going to fucking hit me up for money right now, are you? <laughs> Whoop, he turned around and went the other way. You know. That was it? That was it. Nothing nah. dude. I see some guys all the time. There's one dude who walks around with a uh, a colostomy bag. Or not a colostomy bag. Well, we know one of those guys. What? He emptied yeah. that son of a bitch right in front of Edison Mall. Yeah. 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 I was with a guy that dumped one of those right in front of the food court. <laughs> Let me tell you. That wasn't cool. And then he was surprised to find he got kicked out. Yeah. And then I got chased by the cops. And this, then there was <laughs> this one cat who hit me up on the way into a Smith's. And on the way back out, he hit me up again. I looked down and said, you got a $60 SRH sweatshirt on. Oh no, man! It's 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 busted though. Wow! Come on, come on! Wow! You're you're 23, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I just I, I I don't understand it. I I get it. There's a lot of it is uh, uh mental problems and, oh, and drug absolutely. addiction. But I think there's a lot of also that's gutter punks who think it's the cool thing to do. Oh, we knew one of those. I went to elementary school with him. He lived on the OSU campus for years after graduate. Cat named Terry. You know that's the thing right now. I think one of the most worst cities they say they're progressive but one of the worst cities right now is seattle oh seattle and, is is in and a, have you seen what's oh, been going on there yeah if you see the their homeless population oh. is almost as bad as goddamn la they are fighting literally there's there's a thing on uh k k-o-m-o news um i just checked probably within the past three days uh k-o-m-o news and this guy the guy's sitting there and he's he's been arrested and they've got like a list of the top 100 people that have had run-ins with law enforcement and this guy has had I, I, some ridiculous amounts, like 72 arrests, but he still sit, you know, let loose on the street. Now he's been, they've got video of the guy under the influence of like methamphetamines mm -hmm. and everything. And he's just losing his mind. And he's like, oh, I'm on the top one, you know, top list. And he's laughing about it. And he's on the news laughing about it going, yeah. you know, but he's like, the cops can't do nothing. Because apparently the mayor has stepped in mm -hmm. and like t took down the police powers yep. of them to able to mm -hmm. do stuff with these people. So the explosion of insanity in Seattle's out of control right now, man. Well, let's roll on into news Sorry and shit. That. News yeah. and shit. What do you hey, got? I'm going to actually, I have a, uh, a story for news and shit, Gordon, and then you can follow it up with, uh, with whatever you may have. All right. Um, This is a little... A, a little crazy. Um, I'm just going to get down to it. Let me kill this background music. Indiana teachers say cops shot them with airsoft bullets during active shooter training. What? Teachers at the Meadow Lawn Elementary School in Montecito, Indiana, allege they were pelted with airsoft gun bullets by police during an active shooting drill in January. Gail, a super long last name I can't pronounce, a representative of the Indiana State Teachers Association, testified about the incident at an Indiana Senate hearing Wednesday. During, quote, during the active shooting drill, four teachers at a time were taken into a room, told to crouch down, and then were shot execution style with some sort of projectile, resulting in injuries to the extent that welts appeared and blood was drawn by te Ow. the teachers' union, wrote on Twitter. Uh, scroll down, scroll down. You shot me with gummy bears. Two, you wanted to be. Two anonymous teachers confirmed what happened to the Indianapolis Star. They told us, this is what happens to you if you just cower in the corner and do nothing, one teacher said. Then they shot, uh, they shot us across our backs, and I was hit four times. Uh -huh. 
The incident took place as part of an active shooting training program called ALICE, Alert, Lockdown, Inform, Counter, and Evacuate. It's a nationwide program, though it is usually does not involve shooting teachers with pellet guns. Now, that's a little... They're that's not extreme. Pellets, they're, yeah, they're I mean, assault. they're saying pellets. There's got to be a uh, County Sheriff Bill Brooks' office oversaw the training, though he couldn't go into specifics because he only took office that month and said that he was not there when the airsoft guns were used. Uh, uh, still, Brooks offered, um, offered a confused defense. I'm sorry. Still, Brooks offered a confusing defense of the practice to the star while seamless, seamlessly refusing to confirm that t- the teachers were shot at all. He also said that the teachers all knew it could. He said that the teachers, quote, all knew they could be because it's a shooting exercise. It's a soft round projectile, he told the star, and the plastic pellets are used in the airsoft guns. Um, yada, yada, yada. Now, airsoft fucking hurt. They do hurt. Um, we know here in Southwest Florida because two years ago we were having an active shooting session, and Dave and I railed about this on our mm-hmm. podcast. Because somehow, someone down... What police department is that down there? Where at? Fort Again. Charlotte. Is that Carter County? No, that's Charlotte County. Charlotte County, yeah. The Charlotte County Police Department, or Sheriff's Department, whatever. Yeah. Um, somehow, the gun that was supposed to be shooting blanks had live rounds in it, yeah. and a police oh, officer right. shot and killed a librarian. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. At the range, huh? No. No, that's not Not at a one? range. At a fucking active training session in a parking lot with spectators oh, okay i thought it was like at the range or something no you're right. yeah yeah they, this was right. an active shooter right. he was the perpetrator he had on a nice mask I was supposed to be shooting blanks and shot real rounds now we won't go into all that because we spent the whole episode on it no but first and foremost nowhere in the story does it say that the teachers were handed safety glasses if you go to any paintball range or airsoft range, you have to wear eye protection. Mm-hmm. Furthermore, if you were a teacher and you were handed safety glasses, one of you may raise your hand and say, oh, what are yeah. these for? And yeah, to exactly. which they would say, well, we're going to shoot you with airsoft yeah. guns. And they say, You're gonna be, I opt out. Thank you, no. Yeah. You're going to be attacked. So, A, did, were they offered safety glasses? And, B, why go to that extreme? I, they're trying to put people in real-world situations as best they can, I think. And sometimes the judgment's not right. <sighs> And they're using equipment that's not necessarily it's it's off the shelf stuff. It's but, not necessarily made for that that sign of kind of training program. Exactly because airsoft, I guarantee you, and I don't own one, but I guarantee you, you go and buy any airsoft rifle or pistol, and it's going to say, "Do not shoot anybody within a hundred yards." Absolutely, not, it's going to. Don't you know? I don't know. Go ahead and sh- stand behind someone at five feet and shoot them in the back. Look when you shot me with 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 the with the. Uh, slingshot thing right i mean it's, it, bro that was that was a professional style slingshot and that thing could hurt people and they said right on the on the box right now don't get me wrong i'm not anti-firearm i'm no. all for protecting yourself i have a concealed carry permit yeah he does and um i'm not anti-police but i was a little shocked that i don't want to say shocked because i'm not shocked nothing shocks me i was a little befuddled that they would go through the effort of making them crouch down Wow. And then shooting them. Once again, they're uh, trying to put them in a scenario, bro. I, I see what they're trying to do, but they, they their judgment was off by the types of equipment they were using to attack them. Or with, shoot over their head. Yeah, maybe let, shoot. The, let the airsoft bounce off that wall. But if you get people that are inexperienced with that stuff, and 99... They're police officers. They're well, trained with real firearms. I'm just saying I some I can shoot people, a Glock, but I can't shoot an airsoft gun. I'm saying some people, man. You just never know. They think it's okay. I mean, going, I do World War II reenactments. You know. And we... Well, I know, but do we ever take the Germans and get them down on their hands and knees and put no. cap rounds no, in the back no, of their head no. in front of the public? No, because it's distasteful. Once, once again, you get people that are overzealous, I think, and they take it too far, which is obviously what happened here. And and back to the safety goggle thing. And if, the if this issue. was part of the curriculum of this feature thing, right? we are in a so happy environment. By God, yes. If, if it's in the format of the curriculum of that particular thing yeah wouldn't you a give the teachers eye protection absolutely b give them i don't know like a heavy jean jacket or something to put on <sighs> yeah something that would i mean now i'm right, an old school i used to go bit. play paintball in t-shirts and paintball jerseys and not wear pads but the young cats <laughs> nowadays they layer up because they can't handle paintballs and that's when yeah. they're voluntarily doing it 
from 50 yards away. Once again, you have regular teachers, mm -hmm. chicks most likely, who don't. probably don't have a high tolerance for pain. Yeah, they don't know anything, and these guys are putting them in a situation. And you're you're shooting them unprotected. With airsoft. And, yeah. Oh, dude. Welts. Welts. I got shot by, you shot me with just gummy bears, bro. And you seen yeah, the but welts once again, you volunteered for that. That's you what, I understand coming. that, and I, but I'm just saying. You weren't sent down to what? a job-mandated thing. Imagine no, if, like, imagine what? if we were at, at a corporate event, right? And they said, "Okay, it's yeah. time for the um, annual this annual re meeting." And then I just bust in with a slingshot and start shooting yeah, guys start, start, uh, with pop, gummy pop, bears. Pop, pop, I mean, pop, pop. you sat there and waited for oh, yeah, it that was until I finally hit you. Well, I gave a consent that you know that was not not a problem. I just this sounds this sounds sketchy, bro. It sounds like nobody really knew it's what just was happening. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, that that's gnarly. That is not when, cool. These are teachers. I know. I know a handful of teachers. And they're, they're soft, in my family. And they are. They're older. already paranoid about going to school and getting shot. I can totally see that. Florida just passed a law that if you wish to volunteer as a teacher to be armed at school, you can do so with a concealed carry permit and something like, a, it's a little ridiculous, but I, I'm down for it, like 11,000 hours worth of training. No, it's like, what? No, they need like 1,190, some weird obscure numbers, like 1,100. I, oh, I know, training. Well, which or, I agree with. I think the reason the number is so obscure is it, it kind of pushes out to people who are really dedicated. I mean, right. to do that and to put in that many hours people of training, you have to it. be dedicated. Yeah. And so that's great. But, hey, a lot of these chicks are, because – of the occupational hazard of being a teacher and mm. the potential of getting shot at, at least with the news, making it sound like it's going to happen every day, yeah. when statistically that's not the case, but that's not the point of this conversation. No. You already have a demographic of people who are already terrified of guns. I know some that who went to gun ranges before coming to teach, but after becoming a teacher, they want nothing to do with them. It's... And so then you take them to a active shooter training, mm. and without no protection or heads up, you start lighting into their yeah. back. Yeah. And I doubt these, they may have been, I haven't seen pictures of them, whether they were at this event wearing big fluffy turtlenecks or more likely a thinned layered material blouse like they would wear to school. Where was this at again? Where did this happen? Indiana. Indiana. Okay. Now it is wintertime there, so maybe say, they I'm were thinking. wearing jackets and thick sweaters, but chances are if it was indoors, particularly out of school, yeah. they were probably wearing something more conducive to what they wear to and, and regularly, indoor, which would yeah, be t-shirts or you know blouses and button up what whatnots. That's just crazy. Because the kids nowadays, uh, and I see, like I say, I see. So, uh, so I guess the, the safe question to play the devil's advocate. What? Did the police feel that they wouldn't get the message across that maybe that in the past people weren't taking these exercises seriously enough without shooting at them? Mm. That's a tough one, man. Because or is it just an overall bad judgment call on whoever's running this damn thing? It sounds like it's an overall bad judgment call. And yeah. once again... Um, it's a little bit of both, I think. I think they're trying to educate people and put teachers in a situation where it's like, hey, look, this is what you're going to kind of go through. So there's some sort of aspect of training, but yet, is it overboard? Maybe. Yes. Maybe this was a miscalculated safety step. Maybe they said, hey... Fellas, we got to put the blanks away. Some librarian got killed in Florida, so let's yeah. move to Airsoft, where huh. that way, if we are neglectful, yeah, no one hurt. dies. Yeah, it won't hurt. It just, yeah, it just puncture the skin, little, little bruise. It's up in a PPE, uh, some padding. I mean, hey, this is what's going on. You're signing off your liability, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then you exercise. By the way, here, put on this thick Levi denim jacket. Put on this yeah. headgear and put on these eye protections because right. we're going to light your ass up at some point today. That's what they should do. And because and once again, they did. even if they didn't have to sign a waiver, simply handing someone yeah. safety glasses when they think they're going to be sitting in a lecture all day, they're going to raise their hand and say, well, "What are these for?" Mm -hmm. To which you can well, say, well, "We're going to shoot you." Yeah. And that's just it. And I, you know, just sitting there thinking about it more. I'm sure the guys who set this up thought, "Hey, we want to give an element of surprise. We want to have an element of surprise," but they didn't think everything all the way through to its logical conclusion to say of course not that's not going to work out gordon you and know? i have of course not a cousin who uh -huh. lives in pittsburgh go pans whose son was at school i think elementary school age at this point he's a little older now um super young now okay. keep in mind these kids are already scared shitless of active shooter drills right yeah that's so trippy sheriff's department Decided it was in the best interest because, once again, maybe they thought that the staff don't take these things serious. They did an unannounced active shooter drill at the school. That's, see, that's not cool, Lockdown, 
uh, full SWAT gear running Nobody through the knew. hallways. My cousin's son was so fucking terrified. Yeah, that is that is trauma. He had to go to therapy because he was not only having nightmares, he was fucking wetting the bed for months after this. See, that's just crazy, man. I, I you know, it's kind of the good Why? intention with bad, you know. You have the bad uh, reaction to the good intention because here you are thinking, well, no one's going to take this seriously. Let's let's spook them. Well, guess no. what? You spooked them. Yeah, not a good idea. This isn't a high school with a bunch of jaded assholes. No, this is an elementary, elementary school, school with a bunch of kids who trust their teachers mm. and don't know, them and... don't understand the concept of a simulation from an, an a, a real the real thing. Yeah. It seems like something like that they could approach with it. We're going to treat it like a fire alarm drill. Everybody thinks it's a fire alarm drill. You'll have the fire department there, and then maybe the SWAT team kind of roll in unseen mm-hmm. behind the, the fire vehicles and, and, you know, use that as kind of a block to, you know, so the students don't see that. Well, what's what's a shame is this could affect this little kid's mind for the rest of his life. Mm-hmm. Well, like I said, you his know, parents had taken the therapy. It, now, it could I, affect him. You've seen what happened just this past weekend with the two uh, other Parkland survivors, right? Two. You saw that. I don't I, want to get I into saw it the too headlines, much, but, but I didn't you saw read the that. story. That is just crazy well, to me. Once again, I didn't read did, did you read the story? I read part of it for uh, survivor's guilt and things of this so nature. So were, were the references to uh, suicide notes? Uh, I didn't get to that point, so I don't well, know. Well, the only reason I asked, not to sound jaded, but... I just was like, whoa. If there were suicide notes or there were signs that the reason they killed themselves was because mm-hmm. of survivor guilt or because of the trauma affected by the shooting, yeah. then you know that's, that's a whole discussion we can have. Mm-hmm. But what I'm curious about, just because I'm jaded from, you know, knowing how easily the media manipulates things. Absolutely. If they didn't, in fact, leave suicide notes or make references to the fact that this is survivor's guilt. Right. Because, I mean, Grove City High School, I I know, I think, two people alone who committed suicide shortly after we graduated high school. None of it had to do with the shooting. It's just, sadly, suicide, teenage, you know, there's suicide in teenage life. So, is this two kids who killed themselves because of the trauma they went through or is this two kids who killed themselves who happened to have gone to the, the high school that's my question yeah it, it, that's a tough and, question and, may, and chances are it probably is because of the survivor guilt the, the situation oh. they went through absolutely i can you know, see it and i will admit this I, I used to be very jaded i never understood whenever you know back when i was younger and you, you would hear something like this oh they're bringing a therapist and well, what yeah the the day after my neighbor was shot and killed mm-hmm Three years ago, real quick for those who don't know, I binge watched Peaky Blinders all day, like season two, mm. and then I went to bed, and then I heard pop, pop, right, sound like a thirty-eight. Woke up, didn't have glasses at the time, didn't have my contacts in. I looked out the window, didn't hear nothing. My beagle wasn't barking. Right. My rat terrier at the time wasn't barking. Everything similar <clears throat> normal. You know, no one else in the house woke up. I listened. I didn't hear any cars racing off. I didn't hear any screaming. Didn't hear nothing. So, if anyone's ever spent, like, all day playing Xbox, like you're playing Halo or mm-hmm. Battlefield or whatever, it's not uncommon to dream about the video game. That's true. Yeah. Because your mind has been stimulated so, so much. So, that's kind of what you... And so, I woke up and was like, did I hear that or was I dreaming that from right. watching people getting shot on Peaky Blinders all day? And it's not like a 38. Hmm. And I was at midnight. Went to bed, 2 a.m. Oh, I hate that. Cape cops knocking on my door. No. Three... Lots down, because the two lots in front of my house at that location were empty. And empty. Then, and, well, one was empty, one was abandoned from Chinese drywall. And then <laughs> house, yeah. That house, the cat who lived there, unbeknownst to me, was he wasn't selling weed out of his house, but he was apparently he was this. a stopping point for mm. for large quantities. Mm-hmm. And four way gen- over. And four gentlemen decided they wanted to steal his weed, and they shot him in his front yard with what turned out to be a twenty two long rifle. So, so my... Crazy. My gun, my gun signature wasn't too far off. Thirty-eight wow. and a twenty-two sound very similar. Yeah, pop up. But I will tell you, and I didn't see the guy die. Yeah. I wasn't in the same room, so my heart goes out to anyone who Absolutely. witnesses that shit. But just because where we're at, I'm completely honest. I was jumpy as shit oh, for two I weeks, man. I, I remember. Heard any, and the crazy thing was that following weekend was the first time I had worked with World War II armor, yeah. and hearing 50 cows going off 30 cows and all that but no for like a week the slightest pop 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 or you know car anything dropping lolly i so i do understand what the uh, ptsd, PTSD aspect, yeah. aspect especially of people who either witnessed it or 
were in the next room hearing it. So that is so bad. It's definitely not a far cry to say that these kids did, in fact, do it because of that. But yeah. I'm just curious because how some... Did they ever catch those guys? I don't think they did. The Parkland cats? No, no, no. The guys that did uh, oh, no, they by your them place. Four of them. Did they? Okay, yep. I wasn't sure if they did or not. Yep. I didn't think they did. No, they caught all four of them with like a week. Cape PD did real good wow. on that. Wow. Wow. Unreal, man. Well, all this stuff is just insane because the world's changed in front of our eyes, boys. Mm-hmm. And gals, real fast. And every day, it's it's a it's, there's another catastrophe and another situation happening. A little lightheartedness, never, but kind of the same of, thing. You know? When I, I was a little late getting here because I was out eating my fajitas. Yeah, you were. And Dave beat me. But as I was coming around the corner, this old man and his his wife were going on a walk. And he had like a a piece of a square a, a stainless steel stock in his hand. Yeah? Like that was his punk be cool stick. Oh, really? And, and always, right I always on. find it kind of a little bit funny whenever I see somebody walk around the neighborhood with... <laughs> With an implement that they're obviously meaning to be a weapon, if yeah, they're be, gonna, they're but they're gonna not going as far it. as walking around the baseball bat, yeah, or a hammer, you're right. I've seen a guy walk around with that a golf funny. club in his hand, oh yeah, or some you know piece of just rebar, a nice <laughs> just, stick, rebar, stick, it's like just, PVC pipe. <laughs> I mean, I get it. You're a little concerned, but just buy a damn baseball bat. Yeah. Well, I don't know what it is. The deal. I don't know if you see an older guy walking around with a bat, using it like a cane. There might be a problem. Well, yeah. Yeah, well, I don't know. Maybe he thinks. I know, but I if mean, you see a guy walking down the street with a a three foot long piece of stainless I mean, steel stock in his hand, you know, yeah. you, you know, he's not using it as a cane. He's using that for a. This is my punk be cool stick. Yeah, maybe they should move to Seattle, man. They have no problem. Or maybe they saw the coyote that I saw a few yeah. weeks ago. Oh in the yeah, the old coyote. Yeah, they got no problem. Move to Seattle, man. You can carry weapons on the street, Sarah. Gordon, you anything for news and shit? Because we're running long. I have uh, I have some news and some shit. Oh hell. You just your mic again. Sorry, so, but... what is the worst thing for a career thief to steal? What is the dumbest thing? Oh my God, that's a killer question, bro. What is it? Cop what is... car. What's that? Cop car. What is the? Okay, so you're say the question again. What's the dumbest thing a career crook can steal? <sighs> you said cop car. That's well, that's, a, that's the dumbest a good thing. I, I'm, 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 I'm going to say a police's uh, 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 a policeman's weapon. It's in a similar vein. How about security cameras? <laughs> that is pretty yeah. dumb. So out here in Vegas, we got this guy. They decided to label the blue bucket bandit because he would stand on a blue bucket in front of people's houses <laughs> and jack their cameras yeah. face full on screen. <laughs> so he'd steal the camera but not the DVR yeah exactly so he's not even exactly. getting it, well, not even going in the home he never, he never got into the homes he would just rip the shit off the wall so surprise surprise because as you know Meg was moron. all over the world he got caught of course and because of this he actually now may face life in prison Ooh. due to a history of being a thief and a criminal his history of grand theft three strikes Three yeah, strikes. you guys got three strikes. So, you know, it, uh, it's just incredible how dumb people are. Well, man. Did he at least say what he was doing with them? Yeah, has he, got a, I mean, has he got a drug issue or something, obviously. Really, nothing's come out. It sounded like he was trying to sell them to pawn shops and that. What is <laughs> so he I'm doing sure they had a, had a substance abuse problem there yeah, somewhere. Dude. Sounds but, like a uh, tweaker yeah. to me, man. Russell Fowler. 41, pled guilty Monday for a series of thefts that last year had the police calling him the Blue Bucket Bandit. Yeah, that sounds like a tweaker to me, bro. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty dumb crime, and you know. I think we may have you guys beat right now out here in Vegas. I don't know. I don't know. All the degenerates come here, bro. You know that. Well, they do go out there to gamble. Well, it, it's, so, it's so well known that I, I refuse to participate in it, but like through, <laughs> you wouldn't know this because you're not allowed on Facebook. Through, but no. <laughs> all last week, the, the big no. Facebook thing was What's to go on? to Google, type in, I think, your birth date, and follow it up with Florida Man yeah. and see what news story came up with Florida Man. Oh, no, not cool, man. And, and I, did the do, results. I did it. You did it? I was what was God. your headline? You know what? I'm so happy I'm not Hold on that on. stuff. What was your headline? My headline was Florida Man 88. <laughs> Burned raccoons for what? stealing mangoes. Get out of yeah, here. Yeah, they've had it coming. I'm not giving none of my info away, man. I'm glad I'm not on Facebook. So I mean, I like it. Don't get me wrong. But I've been off of it for over a year now. And I'm actually, my life is a little bit nicer. It's it, I don't have all that bombardment, I guess you could say. Now, I am on Instagram, which is cool. You've been on Instagram. You like Instagram, don't you? 
Yes, sir. I'm on Instagram. Right, okay. You have any other news for news and shit, or we were going to wrap this shit show Let's up? Wrap it up. Just got one thing. I bought a new hat. <laughs> Sweet. I finally got one of these, a new NHL hat uh, for the Golden Knights, and mm. it's the first time I bought a Fanatic snapback. And nice. It's the first hat I've ever had. To, I have. I call the California curl, where the bill actually tilts up. Yeah, nice. my uh, my machine shop hat is like that. I like it. And the question I had, and it actually made me think of D Train was, and maybe this could be for my edification and those who has maybe asked the question on Facebook, what's with the sticker still on the hat? Um, I only do it if it is the um, hologram for the NHL or the you know MLB or something. MLB. If it's a licensed apparel, like I'll take the flex fit sticker off the top. I'll take the like the hat on the hat on now. Actually, that's a lie. I do have a sticker on my. Digital 410 hat, but yeah, it's the know. actual hologram for the original luxury right? headwear of whoever. Yeah. But primarily, most of the hats I, I leave the sticker on are simply the licensed apparel logo. I don't keep the snapback sticker on the front or the price tag or anything like that. I just kept it on this one because it was there. Yeah. Is that a throwback to the 90s when the guys would leave the, the tea bag type <laughs> type uh, tag still on the top yeah, of Yeah, it looks like they're going to take kind of like chicks do with their prom dresses when they plan on returning it after the dance. Hell <laughs> yeah. They're just curious. What? You know, what did you say? Curious, why wouldn't you leave the sticker on? Uh, it's just, it's, I think it's style, man. Well, I want to appreciate everybody joining us tonight. If you want to follow me on any of my social media pages, I don't know what they are right now, so just go to d-410.com and you can find all the information there. Chances are you know where my Facebook and my Instagram page are. But I want to appreciate say I appreciate everybody continuing to uh, support our little show. Our show is growing. And hopefully within the last hour I said a lot of bullshit, but maybe hopefully I said something a little positive, something that's a little motivating. Life is short, life is hard. Chase your dreams, get things done, unlike Dave. Because one day you make up, may wake up dead. Gordon? You can reach me at Aegis1974. That's Instagram. And uh, working on a public persona for Facebook. Got to get the name ironed out. Yeah, we're going to bring that up later. Um, he won. He, right now it's called Big G. What? But you can't. You, you, you don't, one, you don't get to pick your own nickname. And two, that's too close to Big B. But yeah. we'll save that for next week. Yeah, Dave? I want to hear about that. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. What's up, Gordon? I said it was a placeholder. That's all. I hear you, man. <laughs> all right, right on, man, everybody. Hey, we appreciate you guys tuning in. We always love hearing from you guys. So be sure to hit D Train up on the social media. Got any kind of questions or anything? And, uh, yeah, if you want to, you know, hit me up on Instagram, Dave underscore the underscore Waterman. And uh, other than that, man, let's just kick back, boys. Have a good week, everybody. <laughs>